Hey, I'm Craig. Welcome back to Fight the Flat Earth, the channel that fills stupidity's Christmas stockings with poisonous scorpions. Today on episode 4 of Flurfs Are Idiots, we're going to take a look at the crazy world of Phuket World. Fuck it world? Uh, fuck wit. Fuck wit world. That sounds right. Yeah, fuck wit world. Um, I did try to contact him to see how he felt about me um, doing a video about him, but I... Oh, oh. There's a voicemail. Let's just have a quick listen to that. Yes, so, um, he sounds completely sane. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. Fight the flat earth! Fight the flat earth! Fight the flat So, turns out fuckwit word is a special kind of stupid. I've lost so many IQ points going through all his videos that I'm now only 20,000 times smarter than the average flurf. But you know what? I'm willing to do it for you guys, so you never have to reduce yourself to watching the flurf bullshit. You're welcome. So, what particular brand of stupid does fuckwit word have in store for us? I had a look through his channel and found something called Flat Earth Physics 101, which certainly sounds like he's trying to teach us something. Let's take a look. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. Here's a little thought experiment and some real physics. Real physics? Well, as opposed to what? Is the physics that allow our universe to exist fake? There's the sun, okay. Well, that's a fantastic drawing of a sun he's got there. You know what? I asked my five-year-old daughter if she would draw me a picture of the sun. Here you go, Daddy. Here's the sun. Thank you, darling. So, here we have her drawing of the sun. And there is fuckwit words drawn of the sun. I'd like you guys to vote in the comments as to who did a better sun, fuckwit word or a five-year-old girl. So what does he call real physics? Let's have a look. And uh, we are told that uh, the Earth rotates to make the sun set. So I've got the I've got a little table here, all right, and there's a there's a can here. Um, so, what happens when the Earth uh, tilts so that we see a sunset? Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Why is it so hard for the flurfs to understand that down is towards the center of the mass? It doesn't suddenly change. What you're describing would only happen if the Earth were stopping and starting. It's not like that it's nighttime and then all of a sudden the Earth just shifts and the sun's in the sky and it's daytime. It stays there for 12 hours, then all of a sudden the Earth shifts again and it's nighttime. I mean, that's just not how it works. And also, the Earth isn't flat. It doesn't tilt. It rotates. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed, fuckwit word. Oh dear indeed. What else have you got? Let's have a look. Stupid flat earth questions answered. Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. Oh, wait, are you telling me they let these people on aeroplanes? Take a look at that. How far do you expect to see? Wait. You can't even tell if there's a horizon. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just going to pause it there, put a line across it, and, um, yeah, there's curve in that video. Nice one. To realise that we are not on an imaginary spinning ball Earth, we just have to look at real-life examples, such as a helicopter taking off from a moving surface. While the helicopter is on the aircraft carrier, which represents a moving Earth, the helicopter and ship are moving along as one. But the moment the helicopter takes off vertically from the carrier, it becomes free and independent of the boat. So if what fuckwit word we're saying was an actual representation of reality, if you were in a plane going 500 miles an hour and you stood in the aisle and jumped, you would slam into the back of the plane at 500 miles an hour. A fundamental law of physics and an inescapable fact is that the conservation of momentum is a thing. It's embodied in Newton's first laws of inertia, and these things aren't up for debate or question. 
They literally describe how our universe functions. Defenders of the globe will now argue that the atmosphere sticks to the globe as it spins and spins with the Earth. But this is just a ridiculous notion and easily debunked. This should be good. Ready to take some notes. When we just look at the way that winds can travel in all directions, flowing freely across the surface of the Earth. Now, the only thing he gets right, maybe ever, is that the wind does go in all directions. But he doesn't explain why this would be impossible on a spinning globe with the atmosphere spinning with us. That's because flurfs aren't able to think in terms of reference frames. The wind will still cause the atmosphere to move north, south, east and west, but the wind is moving in reference to the spin of the Earth as well. One thing that does prove that we live on a globe is the constantly easterly headwinds in the Northern Hemisphere, which are created by the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis force is an apparent force created by the rotation of our planet, and I will be doing a full video early in the new year about this force. But wait, there's more! Recently, Miles Davis took another photo that pretty much kills Flat Earth. The Flurfs went into panic mode and started shouting FAKE, FLURFSPECTIVE and all sorts of nonsense. Should we have a look at what fuckwit word has to say? Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. I'm going to take a quick and final look at uh, one of these claims made by Miles Davis that photographs like this cannot be taken on a flat earth. Uh, but I'm going to go through some of the points where he's completely wrong. He's either being very ignorant, very stupid, or very deceptive. Um, take your pick. Because what's presented here doesn't even agree with what uh, globe earth defenders would say is eye level the whole thing about uh, the horizon rising to eye level is an observation that anyone can make uh, as long as we understand what eye level is and eye level is um, the horizontal line of sight that uh, goes across the center of your field of view that is demonstrably wrong so we um, just ask Miles Davis what he thinks. No, it isn't. Eye level does not have to go across the center of your field of view. If you want to establish that yourself, simply look forwards and then you moving only your eyes look up or look down. The center of your field of view changes and it is not where it not level with where your eyes are. I couldn't have said it better myself. If you guys want to see Miles Davis's full debunk of that video by Fuckwit Word, just click on the link there. What about um, the fact that uh, on any earth, flat or round, how can the horizon be higher than the island? Yeah, this has been totally ignored without factoring in perspective, totally ignoring perspective and making the claim that because we are higher, uh, we should be looking down through this lighthouse. Then what about this observation that the horizon, the water appears to be higher than the island itself? So what is, what is your claim here? Do you claim to be looking into a bulge of curvature, that this water is in fact rising up in front of you and it's not an optical phenomenon? Because you are ignoring perspective, so we can, one can only assume that you really believe that this water is actually rising up physically in front of you rather than being an optical phenomenon. So if that's your claim, then this horizon, this water level, is higher than the island. So what's happening there? What is happening there? Is this, is this water not going to come rushing back down, cascading over the island because it suddenly got higher than the island? Guys, what do you think? Is he actually this stupid? Is it possible for a human to be this stupid? Okay, yes, on a globe, you actually are going to see water rising up in front of you before it disappears over a curve. The higher up you are, the more water is going to be rising up in front of you before it starts to curve away. That's just a fundamental fact about the shape of our planet. But no, you special, special little man, the water isn't going to come rushing back down over that island for the same reason that rivers don't have to run uphill. Gravity is always pulling towards the centre of mass. 
for everything. What's so hard for you to understand about this very simple concept? Seriously. Like, for real. Well, guys, that is about as much stupid as I can handle right now. Nip on over to Miles Davis's channel and show your support with a big sub, thumbs up, and tell him FTF he sent you. Before I go, I want to say Merry Christmas to every single one of you, even the flurfs. Just do me a favor. For once, don't spend the day talking about Flat Earth. Just spend it with your family and friends and appreciate the fact that they still love you, even though you think the Earth's flat, because, frankly, I'd have a difficult time doing that. And thank you to my 3,350 subscribers and a special thank you to my Patreons. I did not think that after one month of being on YouTube, I would have this amount of support and it makes me feel incredible. And I promise you that next year is going to be epic. One more thing before I go. Next Saturday, the Non Sequitur Show is opening up its floor so that I can challenge any flurf willing to come and debate me. If you think you've got what it takes to take me on in live debate, then contact the Non Sequitur Show. The email is on their channel. That's all for now, guys. Merry Christmas. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Fight the flat earth.